Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm uh, very excited to be talking to you today with our guest speaker, Judith Koff. And the topic today is back to school prep for your kids. Crazy enough to think that in a month's time, the kids are back in school and they're surrounded with new kids and there's runny noses and sneezing and coughing and wheezing and all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, we definitely want to prep our kids um, the proper way to get them going. Uh, so we're really excited to have Judith with us here as our speaker. She is from Calgary, Alberta. She's a master's certified iridologist and nutritional consultant practitioner. Uh, she's been using and teaching NSB for 35 years, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, she has helped so many women and uh, practitioners alike as she's coached and taught on topics of alternative health, overcoming illness naturally, infertility, pregnancy, wellness, postpartum, uh, men menopause, and children's health. So obviously she is very well versed in this. Uh, she's a mom of seven, which is pretty amazing, uh, and, and a wonderful wife. And how many grandkids do you have now, Judith? We have seven. Seven. Wow, that's amazing. Lucky number seven. you got to love it. So we are recording this, and it will be uh, out on the website uh, in, well, we'll be on the website in, in the next day or so, but we will be emailing the recording out to, to everyone, so you will have an opportunity to uh, watch this after the fact, so if you can't uh, take notes quick enough. Um, somebody is asking about the slide printouts. They will be on the website um, by tomorrow. So just wanted to let you know that, and again, it is being recorded, and we are also going to have, uh, if there is time, to have a QA and a at the end. So if you do have any questions, you can feel free to type them in the right-hand side there under questions, but we will re um, respond to them at the very end of this presentation. So without further ado, I will turn it over to our speaker, Judith Cobb. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rancha. Hello. I'm so glad that you are with us today. It would be really boring and difficult to do this if we didn't have an audience. As we talk about back to school prep for your kids, I realize that not all of you have kids. Not all of you have kids at home, or maybe you just haven't had kids yet, or maybe you're not going to have children. However, as a potentially as a practitioner, and I know many of you are practitioners, you influence the moms and the moms feed the kids and so this is whether it's for your own children or whether this is for your clients children either or it doesn't matter the information is still beneficial and useful for you our subtitle is how to supercharge your kids brains to give and give them killer immune systems and we really want their immune systems to be strong now I really don't believe that we catch disease I believe we allow disease I believe that by the chemistry that we set up in our body we create situations where viruses and bacteria feel very comfortable in that chemistry and that's when they move in. So by keeping our chemistry clean, we are able to keep the riffraff out of our systems. The disclaimer that we are only educating you today, we are not diagnosing, we are not prescribing, I'm not telling you what you have to do with the rest of your life. Use this information at your own risk and I will say that my seven children have survived using this information and my seven grandchildren and hundreds of client children. So I would say that it's very safe information that I'm sharing with you. This is me and uh, this was this past summer so this is pretty current, totally untouched. So getting up there with all those kids and grandkids and everything with a few wrinkles around the eyes lately. My One of my real passions that I'm so glad that Rancha invited me to teach this workshop is teaching holistic health coaches. I absolutely adore teaching practitioners and people who are passionately interested, which includes a lot of parents as well. So I'm glad you've chosen to be here today. We're going to uh, be drawing information from a few books and some of the books that I have re uh, referred my parents and practitioners to is Your Child's Brain Starving by Dr. Michael Lyon, Adrenal Fatigue by James L. Wilson, and The Impossible Child by Dr. Doris Rapp. The Impossible Child, an ancient old, and it is as valid today as it was the day Dr. Rapp wrote it. 
we're going to cover today, we're going to be moving pretty quickly here. We're going to cover what the average child's nutrition looks like, problems caused by average nutrition, what superior nutrition looks like, and what superior supplementation looks like. I'm a big believer in supplements. I'm expecting that many of you are as well. We know that our foods now are grown on devitalized soils, which means that even if they're organically grown, they're only as good as what was in the soil, so the food that's being produced is not as nutritionally dense as it was 50 or 100 years ago. So I'm a firm believer in supplementation, and we'll talk about why all of this is more important now than ever before. The average North American diet is very high in sugar, starch, and fat, and health-compromising chemicals. This is this is such important information, and so many people have grandfathered things like Cheerios into the healthy diet scenario. You look at moms who give their toddlers and their, their children who are just learning how to do finger foods little bowls of Cheerios. Here's an alarming fact about Cheerios. 11 of the 15 kinds of Cheerios marketed in Canada have TSP in them. Now, some of you probably know what TSP is. If anyone knows what TSP is, would you put it in the chat there for me? Just type in that answer really quick. What does TSP stand for? Anybody know? If you've painted the inside or outside of your house, you probably used TSP. It's also called, yes, Jen, you said it right, it's trisodium phosphate. It's a degreasing agent, and it's in 11 of the 15 kinds of Cheerios that are sold in Canada. It's also in many of the crunchy, floaty kinds of cereals, so anything that has that kind of a Cheerios texture probably has TSP in it. I'm not sure that there is a minimum daily requirement for TSP. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure there is not, and that it's not something we should be eating. We also know, and you can do this experiment at home, you can take your, your Cheerios, we know that Cheerios and other cereals that are fortified with iron are fortified with iron filings. Now, I don't know if you've heard that before, but you can actually do this experiment. Take the Cheerios, put them in a glass bowl, not a metal bowl, because we don't want to be able to say that the filings came off the metal bowl in a glass bowl, pour water over them or milk or anything enough to moisten it, mush it with a wooden spoon, keep those metal utensils away from this, let it sit for a minute. And then get a bar magnet and drag it through the slurry right along the bottom. When you pull the magnet out, run your finger along the magnet and it will be covered with iron filings, iron dust. So it's frightening to think that anything that's fortified is fortified with iron filings, which are not necessary for us. We cannot assimilate them. We cannot use them. Not a good idea. Most of these cereals and so many of our foods now contain maltodextrin. Now, there are two kinds of maltodextrin. They're slow and they're fast. The slow is not so bad. It behaves more like a fiber in our bodies, but the fast, which is in most of our cereals, is usually derived from corn or wheat, and it breaks down into simple sugars. It creates a really high glycemic reaction, so it behaves like a sugar in our body. And so we really don't want to be using this. It's often used to mask the flavor of artificial sweeteners or sometimes to alter the texture of a product. So again, you want to try to figure out which kind of maltodextrin is in the product and avoid the fast maltodextrin. The average North American diet is very low in vitamins, minerals, trace elements, essential fatty acids, fiber, and beneficial plant chemicals. Plants make chemicals, right? Those are the vitamins and the provitamins and the cofactors, and we need those. When we, we need to just be very careful about what we're eating, and the general rule of thumb is if it has a barcode on it, it's probably not a good food. I know that's a sweeping generalization, but if it has a barcode in it on it, it probably is not good. 
The result of poor diet, we've seen this before, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, poor brain function. And we're seeing these health conditions creep down younger and younger and younger. 16% of children between the ages of 6 and 19 are obese. Now, I don't know about you, but when I went to school, which of course was a century ago, there wasn't an obese child in the classroom. In fact, the teachers weren't obese either. And now as we look at, what's, uh, we look at children walking to school and getting off the school bus, we see this obesity epidemic. Historically, type 1 diabetes was only found in children. And it was the only kind, I'm sorry, historically type 1 diabetes was the only kind of diabetes found uh, in children. Now we're seeing an increase of type 2, which is the adult onset diabetes or insulin resistant. And this is a direct result of high refined carbohydrates in the diet, a high inflammatory diet. This usually starts out as impaired glucose tolerance and impaired fasting glucose levels. In the USA, and I couldn't find stats for Canada, 7% of children ages 12 to 19 are in that pre-diabetic stage. They already have some kind of impaired glucose tolerance. 25.9% of people over the age of 20 years, which is all of us on the phone call, and 35.4% of people over the age of 60 years, which is a few of us on the phone call, fall into this pre-diabetic glucose intolerant area. Our brain cells are the most sophisticated and demanding cells of our body. And when they die, they will not be replaced if the nutrition is poor. Brain cells are very sensitive to stress and toxic influences. And you can read that as the North American diet. The U.S. Surgeon General's report states that one in 10 children now suffers from a diagnosable psychiatric condition such as ADHD, autism, obsessive compulsive disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, or depression. That's very scary. Canadian sources report numbers as high as 20% or 2 in 10 children having diagnosable conditions. We know that for those of us who are adults, that early Alzheimer's can be slowed down by getting enough of the right kind of macro and micronutrients in the diet. And so it's up to us as adults and parents and professional health coaches to encourage better eating. Now the real challenge comes here with teenagers that have their own money. As a mother of, of now grown children, and I still have two teenagers, a 19 and a 17 year old at home, I am thoroughly mortified at the kinds of junk food wrappers I find in their bedrooms or that I find by their computer station. I'm just horrified. I'm so glad my clients do not go in their bedrooms and do not see that computer station because it is embarrassing. However, they know they're paying the price or they will pay the price as they have skin outbreaks, as they don't sleep well, as they suffer with you know some irritability and things like that. They see that very clearly. If the societal average IQ fell by five points, just five points because of brain insufficiency, because of poor nutrition, there would be a 50% increase in the percentage of uh, retarded and disabled people and a 50% decrease in the gifted status. So we want to be using good foods to help us protect our brains and our children's brains. So better nutrition, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, better nutrition, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, good quality proteins, and again, as health practitioners, we need to be modeling that behavior for our clients. If you have a beverage on your desk, make sure it's water, make sure it's in a clear bottle so they can see it's water. No coffee, no tea, no pop, no juice, things like that, right? Drink water. If they... If you're eating a snack at your desk, make sure it's a healthy snack and make sure that your clients can see that it's a healthy snack. This morning, and I posted this on Facebook on my desk, I put a big dish of just cut up raw carrot coins and that's what my snack is today. So if a client comes in, I'm not caught 
blushing with embarrassment. So it's important that we set the example and that we live the example on a day-to-day -day basis. So better nutrition looks like vitamins and minerals and trace elements and essential fatty acids and fiber. Let's talk about protein. This is an absolute must and this is an area that so many children are deficient in. Four to six servings of protein the size of half a palm every day and we're going to avoid processed meats. So use the child's hand as your measurement. A little child, a, a two or three year old needs smaller portions of everything as their starting point than a 17 year old football player would need. Right? So always use their hand as your guideline. We need the protein for blood sugar stability, for tissue repair, for making red blood cells. Of course, we can use chicken, fish, beef if you're not averse to beef, nuts and seeds, but no peanuts because of the high allergen ratio there. We can use protein shakes. I have to tell you, I think Nature's Harvest is the best thing ever. Absolutely, the absolute best thing ever. You can do all kinds of things with that or you can take it straight and it is a beautiful, beautiful way to pick up protein and vegetables and fiber and nutrients. Lentils and legumes. So if your child or if you don't like lentils and legumes, you don't like hummus, you don't like beans, I'm, I have raised a family of people like that, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, but the Nature's Harvest has got the, the pea protein in it, so it's a great way to get things like that into your people. Processed foods, the ingredients in processed meat specifically, although a variety of compounds can be used in curing meats, the basic curing ingredients are salt, sugar or some other sweetener, and nitrite or nitrate. In addition, phosphates are commonly added to brine cures in commercial operations. A number of other compounds are sometimes used in curing mixtures such as various spices, baking soda, sodium erythorbate, hydrolyzed vegetable proteins, carrageenan, and non-meat proteins. So lots of things are in that processed sandwich meat, so we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Much better just to roast the chicken and slice that, right? Much better. And watch things like celery salt, because celery salt is, from my understanding, another name for monosodium glutamate, so MSG. So we really don't want to be doing too much of that either. Food specifics, vegetables are a must, a minimum of one fist size serving for every 25 pounds of body weight. Now when we're talking about a toddler, that's not very much. And they can certainly go beyond that. These are your minimum amounts again. When we're talking about a six-year-old, their fists are still pretty small and they might weigh 50 pounds, right? So um, 40 to 50 pounds. So again, they're going to be eating two fist size servings as their base. Anything they do beyond that is go mom, right? Superb and you want to keep them doing that. French fries and ketchup don't count. We need these veggies for the fiber, the vitamins, the minerals. Use frozen over fresh, especially in the winter time. Use fresh over frozen in the summertime. Now, part of that is because so many of the vitamins are very sensitive. Vitamin C begins to dissipate within 24 hours of being of the produce being harvested. So if you have a head of lettuce that was harvested in California and it takes 24 hours to get to your grocery store, which would be pretty darn fast, the vitamin C is down by 50%. Right, so there's not a lot of vitamin C left. So if you can instead do something that's been flash frozen, things are typically frozen within 24 hours of them being harvested, you're going to actually protect some of the vitamin C. So be aware of those kinds of things. So grocery fresh isn't, grocery store fresh isn't necessarily really fresh, just be aware of that. For picky eaters who don't like veggies, do what you need to. You might want to put a dip with that, you might want to make funny faces out of it, you might want to puree it and hide it in their nature's harvest. You might want to make a soup with it and put it in there and even puree the soup. That's how I got my kids to eat onions, is I would uh, puree, I would cook the onions in big chunks in the soup and strain it, puree the onions and then add them back in and they couldn't see it and they couldn't taste it. But it was giving them some sulfur for their immune system, so it was a good thing. We also want to avoid 
vegetable juices, particularly juices that have, where the vegetables have been, been put through a juicer so that the fiber has been removed because that concentrates the vegetable sugars and can turn them basically into something that's pretty high sugar and not the best for us. Whenever we have the opportunity to actually give them the whole vegetable or vegetables that have been cut as opposed to juiced, much better choice. Now I know a lot of people are anti-grain these days and a lot of people have cut grains out of their diet completely and that's a personal choice or a health choice so that's okay. The obvious thing is to choose whole grains over white. So if you are anti-grain that's fine. If you are using grains but you're going gluten-free then you want to experiment with things like quinoa and brown rice and other substitutes that are not super, super high carbohydrate. One of the problems with the gluten-free diet is when you look at most of the gluten-free flour replacements, they are extremely high in very simple carbs and that's not such a great idea. So do what you can to limit the white flour and the refined flour and use more of the whole grain and fresh grain flours if you can. Beverages, water is best. We talked about that just a minute ago. Some bottled water has additives. Everything from, if it's a flavored water, it might have sucralose. It might have the acyl sulfame potassium. It might have added sodium. It might have Splenda. And so it might have fructose or aspartame. Those were a few of the chemicals that I found in doing research on bottled water. Pretty scary. So we really want to be drinking water. We want to be drinking pure water, preferably filtered water. The rule of thumb is a half an ounce of water per, for every pound of body weight. Now there is a bit of controversy about sending the reusable water bottles from home. The studies have shown that when you send your child to school with a water bottle that they can refill at school, number, the one, they're, number one, they're probably drinking fountain water which may not be purified and number two those water bottles aren't coming home very often and they turn into real toxic breeding pools of all kinds of nasty stuff so it would be advisable if you are wanting to send purified water from home that you do send it in a reusable bottle but have your child bring that home every night to be washed important for their overall health when we talk about fruit in the Canadian climate, fruit is not as important as vegetables. Fruit is very, very cooling as a general rule. It's also very high carbohydrate. Here in Canada, we only need cooling, well, at least where I live in Calgary, for about three weeks of the year. The rest of the time, we could use a little warming. And so remember that just about every nutrient you can find in a fruit, you can find in a vegetable. So I encourage you to spend your time focusing on the vegetables as much as you can. Fats and oils. This is really, really important. I don't know how many of you have been involved in health for as long as I have. There was a time in the 80s, oh that makes me sound pretty old, where everything, everybody was going fat free and they were going high carb for energy, right? And what we discovered with going fat free and high carb was we got people put on a lot of weight, they put on a lot of fat and their hormones and their immune systems and their mental states went loopy totally loopy. We need the fats and we need the complex carbs. So when we're talking about fats, we would really like to be using real fats like butter, olive oil, coconut oil, preferably organic if it's at all possible. Really avoid margarine, canola, oils that are used for deep frying, any of the monounsaturated, unsaturated oils are really, really not great and you would never use them for hot uses anyways because they make them more quickly. We need these healthy fats and oils to protect our brains. The brain is mostly fat to protect our immune systems and to protect our hormone balance. So let's talk about appropriate supplements. When we talk about appropriate supplements, we all know that Nature Sunshine is the absolute best. 
I have been, like, like Ron just said, with the company, I've been using the product since 1979 and I've been using them professionally since 1981. I have had other companies come and go because none of them have been able to hold the quality for more than a couple of years. And so with Nature Sunshine, I will vouch for their integrity. I will vouch for their quality to the end of the earth. They are amazing and they are diligent in making sure they are giving us the very best of the best. I stand behind them 100%. When we are talking about supplements, then let's talk about healthy fats and oils. Okay, so as we look here, uh, focus ATN and essential fatty acids, omega 3 and 6. The essential fatty acids, we're going to pop back to focus ATN in just a moment. The essential fatty acids are critical, they must be consumed daily. Some fatty acids we can make from other building blocks, but the essential ones we have to consume. So we want to be aware of that. They're critical for our cell membranes, for our nervous system function, and for our immune function. Omega-3s are the precursors for the neurotransmitters, lots of different hormones, and for the anti-inflammatory chemicals that our bodies make. So your flax oil is a great one to use, certified lead-free mercury fish oil is also a great, a great one, lead and mercury-free. So you get all of that in super oil. You also get it in our super omega-3 and in our flax oil. Your omega-6 can be deficient in situations of asthma, allergies, eczema, heart disease, ADHD, bipolar, and omega-6 is found in evening primrose, which is also found in super oil. Go us. Dr. Doris Rapp also says that some kinds of ADHD and ADD can be neurological allergies which the omegas can help to balance out. Now, when we talk about focus uh, uh, ATN, this is a fabulous product that provides lots of very core nutrients for brain function. This is one that I get a lot of phone calls for about the last week of August as kids are getting ready to go back to school and moms are thinking, oh no, we had problems last year, oh no. So I usually stock up on this towards the end of August so that when my clients are calling for it, I've got it on hand for them. DMAE is a chemical that is critical for brain function and it is found in cold water fish oils particularly salmon, sardines, and anchovies. So again, you might want to be looking at the omega-3 to look for some DMAE. When we look at mineral, critical for the blood. It's critical for the powerhouses in the cells. Those powerhouses are called, are called mitochondria. And uh, marginal iron deficiency leads to lower energy overall in every cell, including in the brain. So if your child is looking a little lethargic, you may want to have a little check of their iron, maybe get some blood work done or whatever you've got access to. Low ferritin, ferritin is the enzyme that transports iron from storage to active use in red blood cells, can cause restless leg syndrome and involuntary body movements. So if you notice that as your child is sleeping at night, or maybe you, and your legs are twitchy and jumpy, and or maybe um, if, you, if you've got a partner and your partner notices that you're vibrating all night with twitches and jumps, Get a, have a check of your iron levels. Calcium, as we already know, for, is good for bones and it's good for stimulating brain activity. Many calcium supplements are contaminated with lead, but not Nature Sunshine because we check for heavy metal contamination for all of our products. Um, remember that many ADD and ADHD kids are dairy intolerant. Not that dairy is a great source of bioavailable calcium but they are dairy intolerant, so their mothers may be actually feeding them more cheese, more yogurt in the hopes of building um, calcium and not realizing that the child is dairy intolerant and seeing more, more out, um, out acting behaviors where the child is 
not cooperative. And so whenever we're working with ADHD and ADD, we want to cut out the dairy as a test run to see if dairy might be a part of the problem. Magnesium calms the nerves and the muscles. It's called the relaxing mineral. It helps to reduce hyperactivity in ADHD. High levels of cortisol and adrenaline to lead to magnesium loss. So if the child is under a lot of stress, you want to make sure you're getting magnesium into them. And if their behavioral mood and intellectual problems are flaring and they've got high stress, just give them some extra magnesium. Now I've got to tell you, I will talk about that one in just a minute. Zinc is great for the immune, for the gastrointestinal tract, for ADHD, for dyslexia, depression, mental lethargy, anorexia, and bulimia. So it could be important for kids you're working with. Skeletal strength is my all-time absolute favorite calcium magnesium supplement that Nature Sunshine has ever created. It is not calcium carbonate, which means it is well absorbed. It has the calcium magnesium in a one-to-one -one ratio, which also enhances absorption of both the calcium and the magnesium, and it has vitamin D. Best to take this at bedtime on an empty stomach for maximum absorption. We have the, super hero, the Sunshine Heroes Multiple Vitamins Plus Iron. Beautiful multivitamin for or multi minerals, primarily minerals with a few vitamins in there for children. So many of the products like this on the market have artificial ingredients. They've got artificial sweeteners. They've got all kinds of garbage in them that we really shouldn't be eating. And they've done that to make it taste good and look great. Well, Nature Sunshine has achieved that with really decent ingredients. For older children, anyone who can swallow pills, I love the super vitamins and minerals. Again, it's a little bit broader in spectrum for vitamins and minerals, and so I like that. And for younger kids, you know, they can do one or two a day for over six, for six and up. For six to 12, I'd do one a day, and for 12 and up, I would do two a day. And if they're in a high stress phase at school, maybe they're in exam season or they're in sports tryout season or there's some major things happening. I'd even consider giving them one with each meal. The liquid calcium is a lovely, lovely option for children who do not swallow capsules well. Right? It tastes great. It's not chalky like some liquid calciums are. Easy to give them just a little spoonful of this before they go to bed at night. Might help them to sleep better because calcium and magnesium often does that as well. Because we need to be concerned about their blood sugar balance, and that's why we were stressing four to six servings of protein every day. That's largely about blood sugar balance as well as other things. We may want to be looking at GTF chromium because it does help to keep those sugars balanced. It helps to keep their energy stable. To get the amount of chromium that you would get in this tablet from your food, it would take four cups of romaine lettuce two raw onions, or two cups of ripe tomato. Now, some of those vegetables are not a problem for kids, but I'm not seeing a six-year-old child wanting to sit down and eat four cups of romaine lettuce. That's just not going to happen. So if, you, if they'll swallow capsules, or if you can open the capsule, or crush the tablet, mix it in with their smoothie, with their Nature's Harvest smoothie, great way to hide it. Our vitamin E has selenium, and when we do the vitamin E with selenium, this gives antioxidant protection, and it also helps to maintain an ongoing detoxification from environmental contaminants. Also helps the thyroid to function better. Now, other sources for vitamin E with selen and selenium are Brazil nuts, chicken, and fish. Again, it's going to take a lot of those foods to get the concentration you get in this capsule. So use the capsule, but augment with the food choices. Lots of different supplements on this, on this screen. B vitamins, which we've really focused on for most of these, four of these, everything except, except Zambrosa includes your B vitamins. When we talk about the liquid B12 first, because this is my all-time favorite one for kids, it is so important for brain, for blood sugar balance, for nerves, for stress, for insomnia, for everything. One of our children who is now grown and married used to get home from school and she would just be witchy. And I mean 
witchy. Oh, it was awful. And I would say to her, darling daughter, go have a snack, take a swig of your liquid B12, and go to your room. Come back when you're human. And usually, some of you may relate to that, right? And seriously, about five minutes later, she'd come back, and she would be my sweet, sweet darling daughter. The witch had left, and we were fine. But it took a lot of months of her cluing in that that witchiness was low blood sugars and low B vitamins. I love this liquid B12 because when you spray it under your tongue, just squirt it under the tongue and hold it there for about a minute, it's into the blood within 30 seconds, and you see the reaction visibly. You can literally watch that tension in the child's face just go down like the, the line on a thermometer, just go down as it absorbs into their system. If you've got older children or children who swallow tablets, the B-complex is great. The stress formula is great. I've been known to use stress formula with children as young as six years of age if they could swallow, t swallow tablets. I love the B6 for the way it helps them to produce their serotonin which helps to mellow them out for children particularly who are ADD, ADHD or who have problems falling asleep at night. I'll do the B6 in the evening with their supper, get their serotonin levels up, which then bumps their melatonin during the night, helps them to sleep better, helps them to function better the next day. Love Zambrosa. Nature Sunshine just has so many beautiful products and I just love so many of them. The Zambrosa provides a broad base of nutrients and of energy that touches every system in the body. So whether you're needing immune support or anti-inflammatory or something for the glands or something for the gastrointestinal or something for the skeletal system, Zambrosa has it in a tonic amount. And I don't know any children who don't like fruit juice, so this is a great thing to slide into them. If they really don't like fruit, just throw it in their nature's harvest smoothie. Other herbs and supplements for balancing the blood sugar. Now, I'm, my favorite trio here, and you can pick and choose which format. When we put licorice with hawthorn with black walnut in a program, it is one of the most amazing trios for balancing blood sugar and supporting the adrenal glands. So if I am working with a child who has allergies, and remember that allergies always are accompanied by blood sugar issues and tired adrenal glands and a congested liver, these three herbs hit just about everything you need to hit to balance out the blood sugars and bring those adrenal glands back online. So that's what I call my magic trio. Now your only warnings are if they're allergic to anything in the legume family like soy, you want to be careful with licorice because licorice is in the soy family, it's in that legume family, so just be a little careful with that. Um, and if, if you prefer, you can just go with the adrenal support as well, beautiful for supporting those adrenals and again it's a great way, if you've got a child with those dark circles under the eyes, dead giveaway their adrenal glands are suffering. You can tuck in a capsule of adrenal support for them every day and watch how it changes them. If that same child does fine on one capsule in the morning but isn't sleeping well at night, try tucking another capsule in at supper time. Give it time to filter through the system so they've just got a trace left. And it brings those adrenals up to a state where they can actually relax and go back to sleep or fall asleep more easily. Liver support, again, whenever we're working with energy, immune, ADHD, ADD, the liver is involved. The liver does so many things in the body. It never hurts to give a little support that way. If the child swallows capsules, the Live GD is a nice, or tablets rather, the Live GD is a really nice option. I do find that a lot of younger children don't swallow tablets easily or comfortably. And rather than creating stress by trying to say, you have to swallow this tablet and if it gets stuck, we'll figure it out, right? I would prefer to give them catnip and fennel, which is a beautiful formulation for working with that liver again. Um, and so it's a nice way to get it down. It's strong tasting, hide it if you have to or chase it with something if you have to, but it's a great thing to feed in to support the liver, clean it out, take some stress off it. Now for 
Kids who have problems focusing, I love peppermint oil. And all I do is put a drop on a cotton ball, put that in a little tiny little Ziploc baggie, and have them take it with them and have them just tuck it in their desk. And that one cotton ball is going to last for three or four days anyways. And when they're feeling stressed or when they're feeling like they just can't think right, or if the teacher is saying, Johnny, you need to focus, those are all clues for the child to open that bag and have a little sniff of that peppermint oil. had an experience with this with one of our um, sons. He was 19 years old and he was going to serve a mission for our church. So he was at the training center, which is a very intense experience. And he, um, he wrote me a letter which of course took a week to get to me because he was in the States and said, Mom, I don't think I can do this. I think I need to come home. I don't think I can learn everything that they want me to learn. And of course I panicked. I panicked because this had been his dream for so long. So I called down to Nature Sunshine because the home office is just a few blocks away from where he was. And I spoke with someone there about um, I needed to order some peppermint oil to send to him and the, the fellow said, well, I'll just deliver it. And I said, they won't del accept hand-delivered packages. And he said, well, I will personally take it to the mail so he gets it tomorrow. The next letter I got from my son was, mom, that peppermint oil was amazing. It cleared my head. I'm doing just fine. I'm going to make it here. So for clarity of mind, Think of peppermint oil. It's also great for stuffy sinuses and for headaches, but uh, clarity of mind. So if you need to make a room spray, maybe you've got a child who's at home who's studying and they're just really having a problem staying focused on what they need to do, make a room spray. Do a two-ounce spritz bottle with a teaspoon of which hazel, six to ten drops of the essential oil, so in this case, peppermint oil and fill the spritz bottle up with purified water. Put the lid on, shake it, spritz it around the room like an old-fashioned air freshener and see what that does for helping them to focus. Or the cotton ball trip by the door. Make sure your kids get enough sleep. This is absolutely critical. There's been a lot of research lately that talks about how electronics are robbing our children to sleep. Children using electronic media as a sleep aid to relax at night have been shown to have later weekday bedtimes, experience fewer hours of sleep per week, and report more daytime sleepiness. Adolescents with a bedroom television or tablet or laptop computer or connected smartphone um, have later bedtimes, more difficulty initiating sleep, and shorter total sleep times. Texting and emailing after lights out, even once per week, dramatically increases self-reported daytime sleepiness among teens. Not all electronic usage is recreational, as the burden of homework is great for many of our children and their work is often completed on a computer. And that is a significant light source late in the evening. That light, that computer screen shining in your face really messes up their melatonin production. The increased academic demands, the busy social and extracurricular schedules, and the lure of entertainment conspire to keep our children electronically engaged at night. Many children are not fulfilling basic sleep requirements and adequate sleep is essential for growth, learning, mood, creativity, and weight control. Understanding the influence of light and evening engagement on electronic devices on sleep is the first step in helping parents address the dilemma of electronics in the bedroom. When our children were younger, we had the rule that their electronic devices had to be charged in my bedroom. So I would go around um, at about 9 o'clock at night, and yes, there was much weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth as I would confiscate all of their electronic devices, put them in my room to charge so that I knew that they were not being enticed by their devices. And then, you know, kids say, well, I use my phone as my alarm clock. That's okay. I'm a perfectly good alarm clock as a mother. I have no problems waking my children up in the morning. I am happy to do that. If that means my kids are not accessing electronics at night, 
so that they're getting better sleep. It is well worth it. We need to ensure our children get enough physical activity. And we can see from this graph, this is a Canadian graph, that children do not routinely get enough physical activity and girls in particular are very shy of what they need. Regular physical activity and limited sedentary time for children and youth contribute independently to improvements in cholesterol levels, blood pressure, body composition, bone density, cardiorespiratory and musculoskeletal fitness, academic achievement, self-esteem as well as other aspects of mental health. The majority of school-aged children and youth are not getting enough physical activity to meet the current Canadian physical activity guidelines. In school-aged children and youth between the ages of 5 and 17, 13% of boys and 6% of girls were getting an average of at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity daily as recommended in the guidelines. Girls ages 12 to 17 were the least likely to get the recommended amount of activity, only 3% of them were, whereas boys ages 5 to 11 were most likely to meet the guidelines for moderate to vigorous physical activity and that would be 18% of them. So we need again to be encouraging them to be being more physically active. Don't give them rides everywhere. Yeah, make them walk to the corner store. Have them go get the mail from the super box. Um, take them on walks if you have to. You know, good parenting, good parent bonding time. Stress management is really important. Kids are getting so stressed out by school. So how do you know if your your child or your client's child is is suffering from stress? They might be acting out. They might have eating problems, sleep problems like nightmare or problems falling asleep, irritability, crying a lot. Showing that they're scared to be alone and clinging to loved ones, withdrawing for others can be a problem. Feeling like they can't trust others, losing interest in things like school or friends, physical signs like headaches or stomach aches, signs of nervousness like biting their nails or sucking their thumbs, seeing, toddler, or seeing children who are past toddlerhood regressing to behaviors like wanting their blankie, wanting their stuffy, sucking their thumb. Going back to old behaviors they grew like wetting the bed, going against rules or expectations, showing a lot of anger or distrust, showing poor self-esteem like putting themselves down or assuming that others won't like them. What can we do about it? Well, as a parent or as a, a role model, we need to model healthy coping skills. We need to promote and model healthy eating, physical activity, sleep habits, appropriate use of supplements, and appropriate use of stress-relieving outlets. And we need to seek professional help if it is warranted. All right. So there we have it. There is a ton of stuff we can do to help our kids get ready for school. A ton of things we can do with their foods, with their nutrition, with their lifestyle that can really, really help them to have a strong start and a strong year for their school. So that is everything I have prepared for you. Whew, that was fast. You guys will need to listen to the recording and print up the handouts. All right. Well, thank you. That was a wealth of information, and we do have a question. What are your thoughts on grapeseed oil? That that is a really good question, Tammy. Um, and I I say that because um, I have a son who's a Red Seal chef, and when he talks to me about grapeseed oil, it's actually quite disgusting. I'm not sure that grapeseed oil is actually the best option. I'm still going to stick with things like flaxseed oil, coconut oil, especially and butter and the uh, olive oil. And out of that, your flaxseed oil and your olive oil would be for cold use because they are not stable in heat. And your butter and your coconut oil would be for hot or cold use. Okay. Does any 
if anybody else has questions, now is the time to type them in here for Judith. Um, thank you, says Tammy. Awesome. So again, if you have any questions, uh, now is the time. I do have some announcements that I do want to go over with you. So while you're typing your questions, I'll go through this. Uh, Calgary is coming up, and I was just talking to Judith about this uh, before we started the call, and she is in Calgary, so she is the host city, so she's very excited that uh, we have convention there. So we have three uh, amazing speakers, well we have many more, but these are just three of them. We have Cindy Clement, who was last year at our event and has been across Canada with us, and just a phenomenal speaker. We have our favorite Dr. J, who will be there, and he'll be talking a lot about the new enhancements for Inform and the new products. Uh, we have Dr. Lamb, who presented at the U.S. Uh, convention as well, and he worked uh, on the clinical trial for Inform with Matt Tripp, so he will be there to talk about many of his um, findings there, which is so exciting. Um, <clears throat> we also have Tiffany Peterson, who is a um, leadership uh, expert, and she'll be speaking to us on the business side of things. Uh, so very excited about that. So stay tuned for some more speaker uh, sneak, sneak, sneak peeks. Um, so that is coming through uh, soon. And again, if you uh, now is the time to think about convention, to getting signed up, looking into flights. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal event, October 13th to the 15th. We also uh, we have another Inform online certification. The last one took place a few weeks back, and it was a huge success. And we'd like to do it again at the end of August. So again, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, it's the August 30th to the September 1st. It's from 12 noon until 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. It will be recorded, so you will be able to listen to it um, if you aren't able to make those times from 12 to 2. Um, those are the, that is the cost for the options there. Um, if you are a current uh, uh, informed coach and just want to get a refresher, it's completely free for you, so you can join in on that. So definitely talk to your um, downline, your organization, your, um, you know, if you're an informed coach, talk to your participants. Uh, great time to become an informed coach right before, you know, summer is over, people are going back to school in a week or so after September, um, people are back on track for schedules, so perfect time to be starting an informed class, and definitely never a better time, uh, been a better time to become an informed coach with all of the new enhancements coming that we'll be announcing at convention. So make sure that you are thinking about that. Uh, also for the month of August, we have uh, renewing your membership at, um, for the month available for the free chlorophyll, so make sure you're promoting that to your organization and your preferred customers. Uh, sharing Sunshine, so for everyone you sign up, they will receive a free liquid chlorophyll and a parsley, and that's just for the first two weeks of August, so please make sure that you are promoting that. And in addition, you, the sponsor, will receive a free parsley, so definitely a fantastic promotion, so make sure you are sharing that, Sharing Sunshine. Uh, these are amazing product specials that are on, are on for the month of August, and she definitely, uh, Judith touched on quite a few of them here, so the Catnip and Fennel, the Focus ATN, uh, the couple of the Sunshine Heroes there, um, so, so definitely, um, and the Focus ATN, so you definitely have some great options here, so take advantage of these promotions. Also, Judith also talked about the Live GD and the Zambrosia, so those are also on special just this week only, so up until Friday. So definitely don't miss out on that and take advantage of uh, those specials that are happening. Also, we have our webinar schedule. So we have we have this one today. Next week on Monday, we have the new business associate webinar, and that's for new business associates that have started uh, with us. Then on actually, I was just told that the um, the U.S. Inform webinar that happens every other week it won't be taking place until the 23rd. So we do need to change that. Then on the 17th, we have our next manager development webinar, and it's basically uh, talking about how to re-engage uh, business associates back into the business, so that'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then on the 22nd, we have a webinar on what is in form, and this is, um, it's about a half hour webinar just to really give a brief overview on what the inform program is, so it's great for people that are interested in becoming participants and even coaches to learn more about what is in form. And then on the 29th, uh, we have the NSP opportunities, so learning more about the business opportunities. So that's a great webinar to reach out to people that, you know, maybe are our preferred customers, Sunshine Rewards, and want to learn more about, you know, what it means to do the business. So that is the month of August and the September. We also have a bunch more. Um, but on September 7th, mark it in your calendar. We have another special guest, Julie DeVissier, 
we're talking about um, you know the healthy eating options and um, the kids uh, that are back in school. So this webinar schedule is on the website, so make sure you take uh, a look at that. And the final uh, thought here I want to leave with you here today is a fantastic promotion for Sunshine Rewards. It goes until the end of August. Uh, so basically they're getting 5% more. So instead of starting off at 10, they're getting 15%, uh, which is fantastic. Plus they're getting a free crystal clear. So I really hope that you're promoting this with all of your clients, uh, new clients and even previous clients that are just preferred customers. It's a great thing to get them on to Sunshine Rewards. And in depth, the I Inspire contest that I know Judith is very excited about for Cancun and just going after that full force. So uh, awesome job with that. So those are all of the uh, um, promotions that I have and I just want to remind everybody on that. Um, is So far there's been no other questions so it looks like we're going to wrap up here. So I do want to thank every one of you for uh, being with us today. Uh, the recording will be emailed out to you in about an hour or so. And it will be up on the website, uh, should be up by the end of tomorrow. So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being a part of today. Thank you, Judith, for all of your preparation and your fantastic knowledge. Uh, just a wealth of information. I know everybody appreciates uh, what she shared with us today. So thank you for today. And thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.